Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. This video is a refutation of some of the claims made by one Mario Joseph who is an Indian from South India and he claims to be a convert to Roman Catholicism from Islam. I just want to preface this video by saying that I'm not one of those Muslims who denies that there is such a thing as an ex-Muslim. Clearly uh, people do lose their faith, people do go astray, some people do choose hell. And if they want to choose hell, they can go there. That's their choice. So I'm not one of these people who is insecure and who says, oh, there's no such thing. He's lying. Or if he can't recite the Fatiha properly, he wasn't a Muslim to begin with. It's not like that. But I do believe that many of the ex-Muslims who are on YouTube and making videos, many of them, not all of them, many of them have very bloated, exaggerated claims. It's almost a cliched thing now in America that some nominally Muslim uh, Persian or Turk or whoever converts to Christianity and suddenly he or she says, oh, my father was the Imam back in Iran or my dad was the, he was one of the Muftis uh, back in Turkey. When you examine their claims a bit closer, you, you realize that it doesn't make sense. Somebody coming from a religious Muslim family would know certain basics and certain fundamentals things that every Muslim should know. So Mario Joseph also falls into this category of an ex-Muslim. Perhaps maybe he is an ex-Muslim, maybe not at all, we don't know. But if he is an ex-Muslim, he has made certain exaggerated, bloated claims. Uh, he claims to be a former Imam in Kerala in South India. He says that he studied in a madrasa, which is an Islamic religious seminary for 10 years. He studied Quran and Aqidah and Hadith and the Arabic language for 10 years. And I believe that there's no way that those claims could be true in light of many of the things that he says. So the first half of this video is a refutation by me of many of Mario's claims, basically calling him out as a fraudster and as a religious charlatan. Yet, the end part of my video, which I hope you stick around for, is actually kind of a contradiction. In at the end of this video, I actually explain why I can respect Mario Joseph, why I think he's a very creative person and why he's a great storyteller. So don't miss the end of this video. For us uh, to become Muslim Maulana, we, we, you have to study philosophy and theology. So in the philosophy, you will have five years or almost. In that five years, you will be studying about metaphysics, epistemology, logic, etc. And then Arabic language also. And then second term is your theology period. It's called Mukhtasar. The first is Mukhtasar and second is Mutawal. So in the Mutawal period, you will be studying theology, you know, moral theology and Quranic theology, Sharia law, everything. And then by within 10 years, some people will be 12, but those who are very clear in studies and performance within 10 years, they can finish their studies. So I did my 10 years studies in that Arabic college that's situated in South Kerala. So notice that Mario clearly says that he has spent 10 years studying Islam, including the Arabic language. Now, some of you will find it fishy that he says that there's a madrasa where you first have to study five years of philosophy. For better or for worse, I don't know if that's been done. That's certainly not part of the standard Sunni curriculum, perhaps since Abbasid times. Philosophy has been kind of neglected. In the Shia Muslim tradition in Iraq and Iran, that might be the case. So the story already sounds a little bit fishy to me. But the main thing I want you to remember is that he claims to have studied Islam for 10 years and that includes the Arabic language for 10 years, which is a long time. When I was five years old, my parents did not send me to school. They said, you belong to Allah, not for uh, school. And when I was eight years old, they sent me to an Arabic college to make me Muslim Imam. The name of the Arabic college is Kulli Yatsu Daru Salam Al Islam Al Arabiya. I studied that 10 years, studied Holy Quran, Ijitima, Sunnate, Hadith, Muakkad, Taikidi, Mujimili, etc. I hope you understood. Holy Quran, Ijitima, Sunnate, Hadith, Muakkad, Taikidi, Mujimili. Among all religion, Islam is the only religion where there is thousands of commandment. I will tell you one of my experience. I'm sorry if it is little, not very good, but I want to tell you. Let me tell you. 
when i was 7 year old my parents want to send me to arabic college but to receive to get the admission in arabic college my sunnat should be done i hope you know what is sunnat so in this clip mario joseph is saying sunnat in this context here what he means by this is circumcision because of course it is recommended or 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 wajib or obligatory for muslim men to be circumcised so and this is usually done when when the the child is born you know a few days later or something like that not usually at age 7 but mario joseph despite coming from a religious family is saying that he was not circumcised until uh, age 7 what i find interesting is what madrasa is this in kerala south india that has put it as one of the requirements for admission that the uh, that the boy must be circumcised and how do they check i've i've never heard of this a, a religious seminary that pulls down your pants or, or or checks or needs a doctor's certificate to to authenticate that you were circumcised again sounds very strange and very fishy to me one of the things that is a very quick giveaway that mario is not an authentic ex imam even if an ex muslim but certainly not an ex imam and not someone who studied the arabic for 10 years is that when he recites the quran which is impressive in and of itself i give the guy credit for uh, trying much harder than many other ex muslims but actually when you listen to his recitation of the quran it's really off it's it's quite off yukallimu an-nasa fil maghdi wa kathula wa min as-salihin yukallimu an-nasa fil maghdi wa kathula wa min as-salihin a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِنْ حِسْمِكَ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ وَجِيحًا وَجِيحًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَةِ وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِنْ حِسْمِكَ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ وَجِيحًا وَجِيحًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَةِ وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ In Arabic the words take certain case endings depending on what their function is in the sentence depending on whether they're nominative or subjective or genitive case but even without any knowledge of Arabic if i were to ask the average non-muslim who's watching this video who might not have any knowledge of Arabic whatsoever if i were to ask you as a non-muslim what do you think the word in this verse should have been should it have been allah or allah ka what 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 sounds what sounds more original what sounds more muslim allah or allah ka right allah is obviously the name not allah ka so he cannot even pronounce letters of of the the quran properly how could he have been an imam for 10 years how could he have led prayers for 10 years even for one year even for 10 days how would he have led the prayers in the mosque without him you know getting uh, booted out of that position and being replaced by someone better and as you also saw from this recitation which i highlighted in red he also inserts words which are not there in the original verse mario seems to have a habit of creating not just words but even entire verses of the quran that do not exist so in this next segment you will see something that he loves repeating to his various audiences around the world which is about how uh, well you just have a look at the clip for yourself I give my quran and i ask him to read also ich kam mit meinem koran und ich bat ihn dass er dasselbe liest he read in his mind und er las das leise i said open your mouth and see it lotta read lotta machen sie den mund auf und lesen sie es laut vor he started reading und so las er you know what he read er las god can see without eyes god can ohne augen sehen god can talk without tongue Gott kann ohne eine Zunge sprechen. God can hear without ears. Gott kann hören ohne Ohren zu haben. When teacher read this much, I read from behind. Als der Lehrer das so vorliest, da sagte ich von hinten ganz frech. If that is a case, God can have a child without a wife. Na, wenn das so ist, dann kann er auch ein Kind haben ohne eine Frau. <lacht> if 
if god <laughs> if god can see without eyes he can have a child without wife yeah so he's repeated this in other videos too he's even repeated this in a malayalam language video in which he explains that he went to his imam he went to his teacher his quran teacher and he asks his teacher to read from the text of the quran and the teacher reads god can speak without a tongue god can hear without ears uh, god can see without eyes so then mario inserts his own logic or his own argument into that formula and he says well if god can see without eyes then he can also have a son without a wife but the problem is that the quran doesn't contain these verses that he says it contains please be clear i i'm not i i we agree muslims agree that god sees without eyes god hears without ears god speaks without a tongue okay muslims agree with that theologically but the point here is does the quran have verses that can be recited which say that explicitly because it's very clear from the context that mario is not offering his explanation or commentary on the quran he's not explaining his theology he's not explaining anything he's simply reading or reciting from the quranic text he's saying that the quran has these sentences in it and clearly the quran does not have these sentences in it so do you guys think that someone who is an imam for 10 years would make such a mistake can someone who was an imam for 10 years think that there's a verse that you can recite from the quran that says god can see without eyes god can hear without ears god can speak without a tongue it's not believable you see mario it's much easier to interpolate false verses into the bible that are not original you cannot do that with the quran without being detected lay people like me lay people like me will detect it and will point it out to you you would never ever be able to pass any of this in a mosque i therefore find it very very difficult to believe that mario was an imam in a mosque for 10 years let's look at some of the other incredible claims and statements that he made come back to subject and after nine months mother mary gave birth to a child then jews people came to mother saying that mary you unmarried and you have a child which means you are prostitute we will kill this child when jews people came to kill two days old the baby the baby stood up in crowd looking at the jews he said why you call limun nas fil mahdi wa kahla i came from god not from adultery two days old baby jesus spoke according to quran ladies and gentlemen the the jews in the quran do not tell mary that they want to kill the baby that might be implied okay we can let that go perhaps that's mario's interpretation but he clearly says that according to the quran they wanted to kill the two year old Jesus uh, who was speaking the Quran does not give the the age of Jesus when he spoke the Quran just tells us that he spoke as an infant he spoke from the cradle it doesn't tell us whether he was 2 days old or 6 days old or 10 days old or 1 month old or 2 months old so where is he getting the 2 days from again this is not just a slip i've been shown other clips of mario joseph where he says the exact same thing he uses the same script for his different audiences and he clearly says that according to the quran the two day old jesus spoke nowhere in the quran does it say that the two day old jesus spoke so again the question is do you guys i want to see your comments down there do you guys believe that someone making such claims could have been an imam who studied islam in a madrasa for 10 years let's move on adam ipo jeevichirpillallo ഖുർആൻ അനുസരിച്ച് ഈസാ നബി ഇന്നും ജീവിച്ചിരിപ്പില്ലേ അതെന്താ അടിസ്ഥാനത്തിൽ മുഹമ്മദ് നബി മരിച്ചു പോയി എന്നും ഈസാ നബി ജീവിച്ചിരിപ്പുണ്ടെന്നും ഹിയർ മാരിയോ ജോസഫ് ക്ലെയിംസ് ദാറ്റ് ദി ഖുർആൻ സേസ് ദാറ്റ് ദി പ്രോഫിറ്റ് മുഹമ്മദ് പീസ് ബി അപ്പോൺ ഹിം ഇസ് ഡെഡ് വേർ ഇൻ ദി ഖുർആൻ ഡസ് ഇറ്റ് സേ ദാറ്റ് വേർ ഇൻ ദി ഖുർആൻ ഡസ് ഇറ്റ് സേ ദാറ്റ് അഗൈൻ ദിസ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് എ തിയോളജിക്കൽ ഡിസ്കഷൻ വി ഡു ബിലീവ് ദാറ്റ് ദി പ്രോഫിറ്റ് മുഹമ്മദ് പാസ്ഡ് അവേ ഇൻ ഹിസ് എർത്ലി ലൈഫ് Of course spiritually we believe that he is alive as are all of the prophets all of the martyrs all of the righteous people are alive and in the good care of God but in his earthly life medically did the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him die Muslims believe that we accept that but does the Quran say that the prophet Muhammad is dead absolutely not and as a muslim as an ex muslim he should know that Muslims believe that the Quran is the direct speech of God to the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so god would not be informing the prophet muhammad that he is dead at the most the quran uh, alludes to the prophet's future death that he will die as other prophets have died but nowhere does it state that he is dead 
So again, Mario Joseph is quoting or referencing things from the Quran which don't exist. They are not there in the Quran. Chapter 19 of the Quran, chapter Maryam, chapter 3 of the Quran, family of Maryam. And in the Holy Quran, chapter 3, the name of the chapter is family of Maryam. About Maryam, Holy Quran chapter 3 verses 34 onwards says that Mary was born without original sin. She never committed any sin in her life. She was ever virgin. Uh, Quran chapter 50 verses 23 says that she went to heaven with her physical body. Even the assumption is written in Holy Quran. Quran chapter 3 verses 34 onwards says Mary was born without original sin. She never committed any sin in her life. She was ever virgin. She went to heaven with her physical body. She is interceding for us. Mario Joseph says that chapter 3 of the Quran is entitled the family of Mary or the family of Maryam. This is not the name of the third chapter of the Quran. The Quran does not have a chapter called the family of Maryam. Chapter 19 is called the chapter of Maryam as he correctly stated. But chapter 3 is called Ali Imran or the family of Imran. And yes, according to the Quran, Mary is part of the family of Imran, but then you can't just rename the chapter, then you could have renamed it uh, Ali Isa, the family of Jesus, or you could have renamed it Ali Adam, the family of Adam, because hey, Mary's part of the, uh, the children or the descendants of Adam and Eve as well. So no, the name is the name, and uh, chapter 3 of the Quran is called Ali Imran, the family of Imran. It's not called Ali Maryam or the family of Mary. Do you guys think that somebody who was an imam for 10 years, who studied in a religious seminary for 10 years, who studied Arabic language for 10 years, who studied the tafsir of the Quran for 10 years, would somebody make a mistake like that to get the name of chapter 3 of the Quran wrong? Also, of course, the Quran does not claim that Mary was born uh, without sin. Although, again, theologically, we don't have any problem with that. We believe everybody was born without sin. Believe it or not, we even believe Mario Joseph was born without sin. Even he doesn't believe that. So everybody's born without sin. The Quran does not emphasize anywhere that Mary was born without sin. It doesn't state that. And it doesn't state anything about her being uh, perpetually a virgin, meaning that she never married or she never had any other children uh, other than the Prophet Jesus. The Quran doesn't state that. The Quran certainly does not talk about the bodily assumption of Mary, which is a Catholic and an Eastern Orthodox religious idea that after Mary died, she too was resurrected after three days, and then she was bodily assumed into the heavens. In other words, God raised her into the heavens where she is now. The Quran does not teach this. If the Quran taught this, the Protestant evangelical Christians would have been on the Muslim's case. They wouldn't have failed to point out that the Quran contains uh, false Catholic doctrines and things like that. And of course, Mario Joseph uh, claiming that the Quran says that Mary will intercede on our behalf. Uh, where in the Quran does it say this? Brothers and sisters, do you think that someone who is an ex-imam, who was an imam for 10 years, would make such major blunders like this? Absolutely no way. Men's name, historian says that Prophet Muhammad married 24 wives. Which historians, according to Mario Joseph, say that the Prophet Muhammad married 24 wives? I've heard nine wives, uh, I've heard 11 wives, so historians and scholars may dispute the number between 9 and 11, but 24? Where did Mario get this from? Can someone who is a former Islamic imam or scholar, even just a student of knowledge, even, ju even, just a even just a student of Islamic knowledge, could someone like that make such a major mistake and such a major blunder? I don't believe so. I don't believe that Mario Joseph was an imam for 10 years, not because I believe that it can't happen, but because I believe that all of the evidence is showing us very clearly this guy is a fraudster and, and, and he's a charlatan. Yeah, so Islam has much connection with Zoroastrianism, not with Christianity and Judaism. But because Muhammad was uh, lived in Arabia and there were so many Christian friends and Jewish friends, and since he married a Jewish lady, Khadija, he has the influence of uh, Old Testament and New Testament. Mario says that the Prophet, peace be upon him, married a Jewish wife, Khadija. Khadija radiallahu anha was not Jewish. The Prophet did marry a Jewish woman, but it was not Khadija. And again, even just a basic student of knowledge, even our Christian friends who have read one or two books on Islam, 
they would not make a blunder like this to say that Khadija was Jewish. Now, imagine she's Muslim. When she gets a baby, when she see baby, she will be excited, but she will never touch baby. No touching. When she's touching, she will say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, I receive you, my daughter, to this world. Without naming Allah, you shouldn't touch baby. Second, once if we get the baby, once if you hang, hand, uh, took baby in, in your hand, you will never give kiss. You shouldn't. You must tell in the ear of the baby, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Mario says that when a Muslim baby is born, the mother is not allowed to touch it, the mother is not allowed to kiss it, until first the name of God, the name of Allah is first said or pronounced into the baby's ears. I'm not going to hold him to account for that because Muslim customs can differ from place to place and from time to time. The way Muslims do things in Albania regarding such rituals might differ a little bit from how they do it in Indonesia, how they do it in North India. So in South India, in Kerala, Perhaps this is a custom. I'm not going to hold him to account for that. However, the mistake that he certainly is making is when he says that the mother says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah into the baby's ears. Typically, it would not be the mother. Typically, it would be the father that would do that. And it's not the kalima. It's not La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It's the adhan. And of course, the adhan contains within it the shahada or the kalima. But let's look at the next clip, which is in the Malayalam language which was translated for me and i will translate for you marichu umma or prarthana nadathum bismillahi rahmani rahim ennu parayum adayathu paramagarunikanaya allahuvinte naamathil ende mone allengil mole njan swigarikkunu ennu paranja umma kayil vaanga kayil vaangiyadinu shesham umma kunninte valathe kaadil aadyam parayum la ilaha illallah allahu ninde deivamaan edathe kaadil parayum muhammad rasulullah muhammad ninde pravajagana so in this clip, Mario is more specific and he says that the mother, not the father, he says that the mother says La ilaha illallah into the right ear of the baby and Muhammad Rasulullah into the left ear of the baby. This is wrong. This is not part of Muslim custom anywhere that I know of. Rather, the father, if they wish to observe this custom, the father would say the avan, which is the full call to prayer in the right ear of the baby and then he would say the iqama, which is the repetition of the call to prayer in a modified form in the left ear of the baby. So do you think it's possible that someone who was an imam for 10 years, who studied in a madrasa for 10 years, could he make such a major blunder? Could he make such a major mistake? How many birth rights and burial rights did he do wrong in those 10 years? This is laughable stuff. Even regular lay Muslims know. Even every Muslim man who's basically been a dad knows that you say the adhan in the right ear, the ikama in the left ear, if you want to observe that custom. It's not half of the shahada in one ear and half of the shahada in the other ear. At times, Mario also says strange things. I don't know if, if it's a language problem, if it was just a, a mistake, he meant it in a different way, or is it a genuine slip and he ends up revealing something about himself which, which he didn't intend to. So listen to the following clip. Listen to this very carefully. Uh, do you believe that Islam is a heresy of Christianity or a kind of a, a, a misbegotten version of it or a mistaken certain elements of Christianity are, are kind of taken and twisted? Uh, I don't know uh, if, if, uh, if you ask me like that authentically, I cannot say, I cannot uh, pass a comment, but uh, I personally believe uh, we should never, I, I never believe that uh, uh, Quran is word of God, and I never believe that Muhammad is true prophet. So in this clip, curiously, Mario says that he never believed that the Quran is the word of God, and he never believed that the prophet Muhammad is a true prophet. I wouldn't necessarily make too much of this because, uh, again, he maybe he expressed himself wrong. Maybe he intended to say something else. I'm not sure, but it could have been a genuine slip. Or perhaps he would explain it away by saying that despite the fact that he came from a Muslim family and he was forcibly enrolled in a madrasa, he studied it for 10 years, but in his heart, he never really believed. He never really believed in the religion of Islam. He never really believed that the Quran is the word of God or the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet from God. 
if that is the meaning, if that is what he intended to say, then we would say to him, great, then don't promote yourself as an ex-Muslim. If you never believed in Islam, and by your own admission, if you are telling us that, if you are admitting to that, then it doesn't matter whether you had a beard or not, whether you uh, knew Arabic at one point in time or not. If you never believed that the Quran is the word of God, then you, you were just a hypocrite. You were someone disguised as a Muslim. You never truly were a Muslim. So anyhow, that brings to an end this portion of the video in which I just wanted to refute Mario Joseph, not even his ideas or his presentation of Islam necessarily, but just refute his claims to being an ex-imam, somebody who was an imam, somebody who was religiously trained in a Muslim seminary. No way. Clearly the guy is a fraudster and he's a religious charlatan. When I first saw his video, you know, he was, he's talking so calmly in one of his interviews that I actually thought he was a genuine ex-Muslim and I thought his story was genuine. But as you have seen and as we have seen together from all of these clips, the guy is a bit loopy. He invents lots of facts. He might not be mentally stable at all. In all the verses of the Holy Quran, God Allah says, O oh, people, you are my slaves. Allah calls me slave and I call him master. Master cannot love the slave, slave cannot love the master. And I don't like to be called by someone as slave. That's why I said, I don't need God, Allah, who calls me slave. But I need God, Jesus, who calls me my son and whom I can call my daddy. So again, this is, I think, one of the common threads that you see amongst many of these ex-Muslims. There are issues there. There are some serious emotional and psychological issues there. Uh, I'm not a psychologist or, or, or a psychiatrist, but my guess is that there are some daddy issues there. And as you'll see in one of the upcoming clips, he alleges that his Muslim father did try to kill him after he converted to Catholicism or to Christianity. So so maybe, maybe after his father rejected him in that way, he really was looking for someone to call daddy. So there could be daddy issues there, there could be all kinds of issues there. But listen, enough of deconstructing the guy, enough of criticizing him or making fun or laughing at his blunders. This last segment of my video, I actually want to tell you why Mario Joseph is deserving of our respect. And I mean that. I think the guy is a fantastic storyteller. I think while we're busy refuting his these little points and these little uh, mistakes and things, he's actually working on a much deeper structural level. His whole story and testimony is working on a very deep structural level, on a deep subliminal level. And I'll show you what I mean. Please pay close attention, be open-minded, and stick around till the very end of the video. When I was in the womb of my mama, there was an infection for her womb. So all the doctors said the child will die in the womb. And doctors compelled my mother to kill my child, kill the child, you know. So, but she is very good devotee of Allah, God. So she did not accept anyone or any advice. She prayed to Allah saying, Allah, life belongs to you. So I know you can give life. If you give life for this baby, I will surrender this baby for you. That was her offering or a surrender. And uh, miraculously, I, I was born. All thought I will die in the womb. I love the way Mario Joseph, as a, as a Catholic preacher and as an inspirational speaker to young Catholics, how he's modeled his story after that of Jesus. So with Jesus, of course, in the Gospels, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, and in the Quran as well, Jesus has a miraculous birth. He is born a virgin mother. There is no biological father who is involved. And Mario's birth also is a miraculous birth. All the doctors say that he is going to die. The infection in his mother's womb is going to result in his death. But uh, due to divine aid and blessing, the miracle happens. And Mario himself describes his birth with the word miraculous. I love the parallel. And I think if you're open-minded, brothers and sisters, I think you too will appreciate that this is just a great parallel. I love the way that he, he lays out his story. So what if it's not true? It's, I'm not talking about whether it's true or false. I'm saying it's a great story. Keep watching. When I was seven year old, my parents want to send me to Arabic college, but to receive, to get the admission in Arabic college, my sunnah should be done. 
Okay, so according to the Gospels, Jesus was circumcised on the seventh day, and Mario was circumcised in his seventh year, which 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 is a bit more tragic, to be honest with you. Uh, I, in some of these points, uh, Mario's story is actually uh, a bit more tragic than that of the biblical Jesus. So one day I went to my teacher, the one who taught me 10 years in Arabic college, and I asked him, teacher, how the God created the universe? Then he said, God created the universe through the word. Through the word. Then my question, word is creator or creation? Must clear it. My question, whether the word of God is creator or creation? Quran says Jesus is word of God. If my teacher said the word of God is creator, which means Jesus is creator, then the Muslims must become Christian. Suppose if he said the word is creation, he will be trapped. You know why? He said everything created through the word. Suppose if we say the word is creation, then how the God created the word? Wow. So he cannot say the word is creator, cannot say the word is creation. So he was quite angry. He pushed me out of his room and said, word is not the creator, not the creation. You get out from me, he said. So just as Jesus recited the Jewish scriptures to the Pharisees and the scribes, he knew those scriptures even better than them. And he recited them and he taught them in such a way that he was able to confound them. The Pharisees did not have uh, any valid responses to give to Jesus. And Jesus uses the Old Testament scriptures, uh, according to the New Testament, he uses the Old Testament scriptures to prove the idea or the concept of the divine Messiah, that the Messiah will be God himself. And in Mario's case, we see that he recites the Quran. He recites the Quran uh, not only in Arabic, but also in English, in Malayalam. And he does it in such a way, he interprets it in such a way that he is able to confound his Imam, his Quran teacher, who becomes frustrated and says, get out. I love the parallel. Again, I'm not talking here as a Muslim. I'm not talking now as someone interested in the truth. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, just look at it from the perspective of a compelling story. The storyteller in you has to appreciate this amazing narrative and the way Mario has laid it out. I think it's brilliant. I think this is what makes Mario super Mario. He found me in a Catholic retreat center and one fine day my dad came there and it was very horrible because he beat me very badly and there was bleeding from my nose and I was unconscious and then he took me home. Uh, I don't know how he took me but somehow he took me home because I was unconscious. Uh, when I came in conscious, I was in a small room without any cloth. I was completely naked and my hands and legs were chained very tight and I could not even speak because there was chili powder in my mouth, nose, eyes and you know wherever the wound was there in my skin they applied some chili there also for, for me to get burning. So in the case of Jesus, it was his own people, the Jews, who tried to kill him and even his own family thinks that he, Jesus, is crazy. In the case of Mario, it's of course the Muslims who want to kill him and his own family, that is his, his own Muslim family, uh, tries to kill him and of course, you know, disowns him. And then uh, after so many days, like without food or water, my stomach became wrong and my entire body became weak and I became like a bone. Like, finally, I lost even my memory power. I can't even think because no food, no water. So like a dead man. And I don't know how many days, more than 20 days it was there in the room. This uh, fasted 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted by Satan. Uh, Mario uh, f is forced to fast. He's starved for 20 days and 20 nights according to him, uh, and he gets uh, no food and no water, which uh, itself is a miracle that he was able to survive that. And he too was tempted because, as we will hear later, his father um, comes to him and says, look, if you want to believe in Allah, that's okay and we will let you go. But if you want to believe in Jesus, uh, then I will kill you. This is the punishment. A and again, I think this is brilliant. I think this is what makes Mario super Mario. 
whereas it was Satan who was tempting Jesus when Jesus was fasting. In, in Mario's story, you know, the Muslim father, you know, the Muslim father has displaced or replaced the role of Satan uh, and, and, and taken on that same function. I think this is brilliant. I think this is a compelling story. You have to admit this is a compelling story. Compel I don't mean convincing. I mean, for someone who would be convinced of this story, this would be a compelling and an inspirational story. The filmmaker in you, the script writer in you, has to appreciate how, how beautifully Mario has laid out his story. Within few days, uh, they did not give me food or water and I, I was dried off. And one day my lift broke and I was trying to lick little blood to wet my throat. Then my brother came and passed urine in my mouth. You know, they said, that, that's punishment for you to believe in Christ. Check this out. So Jesus, when he's on the cross, is given vinegar to drink, which is just such a cruel joke. And Mario is, is given urine to drink because he, his brother uh, urinates in his mouth. I got to tell you, I, I, I do believe I would prefer the vinegar. And one day, my dad came to room and he removed my chain and I was not aware. And he chopped my throat very deep to know is there, is there life in my body. So when he chopped very deep, I couldn't breathe. So when I opened my eye, I could see a big knife in his hand. So Jesus, according to the Gospel of John, was pierced with a spear by one of the Roman centurions to, to check or to make sure that Jesus is really dead. In Mario's case, his father comes in and chokes him. I guess Mario couldn't have himself being speared because like Thomas, like Doubting Thomas, uh, we would be asking Mario to show us the marks or the, the wounds of that spear. But Mario says that he was choked very aggressively by his father because his father wanted to make sure to check whether he was dead or alive. Of course, how Mario survived 20 days and 20 nights without food and water that is a miracle in and of itself. I don't know, it must have been some magic urine that, that kept him alive because the average person, I think it's maybe five days after five days of no proper food and water, you know, the, the person would typically die. So this is why I think Mario is a genius. I think, listen, Muslims, we have to be a little bit, we have to be a little bit more liberal. We have to be a little bit open-minded. We have to understand that this might be Mario's truth. You know, what, what, what we think objectively uh, is complete rubbish and, and completely uh, a fraud. Perhaps Mario's mind works differently. Perhaps uh, he is genuinely convinced of the truth of Christianity and he believes that as long as what I'm teaching is, is theologically true, as long as, as it's promoting the true theology, the true Christology, the true view of Jesus and Mary, do the, do the fine details of the story really matter? Do they really have to be true? Does every point have to be exact and precise? You know, maybe Mario just looks at the world in a way different than we do. As someone who has always appreciated a good story, I love the way that he has paralleled his life with that of Jesus, presenting himself really as a, as a new kind of Messiah. I think he's a genius. And I think, you know, he would make a, a great script writer for a film. He would make a great novelist, a great fiction writer, because he knows how to work with themes. He knows how to weave things together. And that is a great talent. I mean, we, we have to, you can hate me for saying this, you know, you can hate me for saying this. You can give me thumbs down, give thumbs down for the video. That's okay. But I am going to commend Mario Joseph as a fantastic genius storyteller. And I decided suddenly a light fell on my forehead, you know, a moonlight, something fell on my, and there was a kind of uh, electric shock, something passed throughout my vein. And I was so energized, you know, from somewhere the energy flow into my body and I couldn't control myself, that much energy there was in my bone. I pulled my dad's hand down and I cried out, Jesus! When I cried out, my dad fell on the ground. When he fell with the knife which he was holding, there was a big bone for his chest. And there was bleeding and some kind of foe was coming from his mouth and he was screaming. I love it. Jesus conquers death in the Bible. You know, we, we all know the story from the Bible. Uh, Jesus was crucified, he died, he was buried. And after three days and nights in the tomb, he resurrects himself and then ascends to the Father, conquering death. 
and conquering sin and Satan. And so Mario as well, certainly he escapes from certain death. After 20 days and nights of no food and no water, except a bit of urine, the man should certainly be dead. And now his father comes at him. Mario has zero energy left in his body. Mario, uh, Mario's dad is about to kill him with a knife. And what happens? There's a shining bright light. Suddenly, there's a burst of energy in Mario's body. And miraculously, we don't know how, but Mario's dad ends up on the ground with a very severe wound chest from the very same knife that he was going to use to kill Mario. I love this story. I think the story has all the elements of a great story. You have the protagonist, you have the villain, you have a, a, a big challenge, a, a big problem that needs resolution. You have escape from death, you have divine aid, you have redemption. All of the themes, that, all of the ingredients that you need, you have it right here. I love it. I think it's fantastic. And at the end, my parents, you know, um, they did a mock uh, funeral ceremony. You know what it is? It's uh, like um, outcasting, keeping you out. You know what they did? They made my statue and buried in a grave and they wrote my birth date and death date. They wrote the original birth date, but the death date the day when I became Christian, when I took the baptism. So that is the death day for them and they buried. So in my hometown, I have my own grave, you know. This is too much. This is absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, Jesus had the empty tomb. Yes, and Mario has the empty grave. It is just the perfect finish to a perfect story. It is the cherry on the cake. It's fantastic. I love it. Mario Joseph, I commend you for your creativity and for your amazing storytelling skills but again at the end of the day do i believe that he's an ex-muslim maybe do i believe he's an ex-imam no way is he an ex-imam who was actually a scholar who spent 10 years in a religious seminary studying arabic and quran and tafsir and, and everything else that he says absolutely no way